Hallelujah. Somebody exalt the Lord right now. Just exalt him. I will exalt. I will exalt. I will exalt the Lord. I will exalt the Lord. I will exalt the Lord. I will lift him up. I will worship him. I'm not worried about what happened this past week. I'm not worried about what's coming up. I'm going to think on the Lord right now. I'm going to turn my eyes on him right now. I'm going to cast down every thought that would lift itself higher than God. I worship you, God. I exalt you, God. I lift you on high right now. I worship you, God. Hallelujah. 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 It's you we worship. There's no one beside you, God. There's no one else on the list. It's just God. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Take another minute and worship him. Worship how awesome he is. Worship how great he is. Not because of what he's done, but just because of who he is. Just worship him because he's God. Worship him because he's the king of all kings. Worship him because he's the Lord of all lords. Worship him because he's the great one. Worship him because he's awesome. Worship him because he's love. Worship him because he's peace. Worship him because he's joy. Worship him because he's strength. Father, we just take a minute right now to say thank you. We take a minute and exalt you above everything in our heart and our mind. We cast down every thought, Lord. We cast aside every care, Lord. Focus solely on you in this moment, Lord. We worship you now. We worship you, God. Let his praise be on your lips this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Say God is good. 
give him one more hand clap of praise as you're seated this morning. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Good morning. I want to welcome you to Epic Church. My name is Pastor Michael Causey. I'm the Dream Team Coordinator here. And on behalf of Pastor Stephen Apostle Shirley Arnold, we welcome you here. I'd like to take a moment and invite your attention to the screen for some uh, church news we have. you would like to know where things are or maybe you need prayer because a family member is in the hospital or maybe you want to get connected but not really sure how after service go to the information desk in the lobby and someone will be there to help you are you ready to get connected and learn more about epic well if so please join growth track for more information please visit the information center join the text tree today text epic to the number 292929. Are you looking for a generous opportunity to serve? Well, here is your moment. Come be part of the team and let's make it happen here at Epic every Thursday evening. Child care will be provided from 6 to 8. If you are part of Dream Team, please mark your calendars for Saturday, June the 27th. We will come together and hear more about the vision for our team as we move forward. To learn more, please visit the information desk in the lobby. All right, Fearless in 15. How many is fearless? How many fearless warriors we have this morning? Awesome. It's my privilege and pre pleasure this morning to uh, receive our tithes and offering. And as you're getting that ready, I, I just thought of a scripture this morning. It says, Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And I, I think about, you know, my kids, and I did it, and I'm in the process of driving that out of them now. But, you know, I, my parents would say, Get in the car, get your seatbelt. I'm like, Get in the car, get my seatbelt. You know, and I would. <laughs> Make fun of them. Not where they could hear it, usually. <laughs> but I would do that. But in this scripture here, we hear God saying, don't be deceived for one second. And I'm not mocked. You can't mock me on this because this is an absolute. This is a law. This is a principle. It cannot be changed. It cannot be undone. It cannot be broken. Whatsoever a man sows, that's what he will also reap. So many times in our Christian walk, we move into and we go to the uh, the kingdom restaurant. We, we walk up into the kingdom of heaven and we sit down at the table and we let the master serve us. We look at the menu and we pick and choose what we want and cut out some of the things that we don't like. And if the service was good and if the food's good, we kind of tip God. So we come in on Sunday, we throw a couple of dollars in the basket or something like that and we tip God. But we need to transition our thinking into understanding that we are sowing into the kingdom of heaven, into the most fertile soil that ever it has existed in the history of the earth and the history of time itself the most fertile soil and we have no choice but in the law and under the law of God to understand that we will reap kingdom benefits kingdom anointing kingdom favor kingdom blessing which supersedes above anything that we could possibly ask or think in this world and so if we can move into the place to where we understand that what we sow we will reap and that it is a command to us that we should both sow and that we should both reap and as we sow we will reap and if that hasn't been you and you've been just a tipper you know I, I encourage you to transition and receive the blessings of God so many times in our life we get down in despair and we give God everything we have you know we'll empty out our pockets for God when we don't have it we'll come and we'll be a part of everything and, and get plugged in everywhere and then we get the blessing Oh, hallelujah. And we move into that tip stage once again. We call it the maintenance phase. We just throw God a couple dollars for the blessing and favor that he's done for us and all of that stuff. But let me encourage you that what it took to get your blessing is what it's going to take to maintain that. And if you want a greater blessing, then give over and above that because God then knows you know what to do with the blessing once you get it. And you'll know and understand the principle of God. So I would have you reap today. I would have you be blessed beyond measure. I would have you 
be and walk in the favor of God that you don't even understand. People look and go, oh my gosh, how in the world did that happen to you? You're not qualified. You haven't been here long enough. You, you don't even know anybody. How in the world did you find yourself right here in this spot, in this spotlight? And because you can just look and say, because I sowed and I know how to reap a spiritual blessing. Amen. So if you would stand with me this morning, having prepared your tithes and offering, we receive our tithes and offerings separate. We believe our tithes are holy and separate and set apart unto God. So if this morning you would come down as we receive with your tithe only. prepared your offering. Let's give hilarious this morning. Let's give with joy. If you would, as we receive our offering this time, the over and above our tithe, just to say I'm blessed, I'm you favored. Let's do it with joy this morning. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. You are Hallelujah. You can see worship doesn't stop around here. We worship when we're sitting, when we're standing, when we're giving, when we're listening. If you would, just stretch your hands forward. Father, we pray for this seed right now, and I pray that you bless it to your kingdom, that it would produce mighty fruit for your kingdom, O oh God. Bless the sower, that they will reap what they have sold many times over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen.
And to be back home with you and Pastor Steve and I just uh, are so grateful to be here and, and just to, how the Lord leads us and guides us. And I, I thank God. I asked for that song. They're, they're still out there praying. It, it, the, the ones who were dancing are out there. I can hear them praying. You know, um, I asked them to do that song uh, before we even got home uh, today because I think that um, it, it speaks to the realities that we all are facing and, and there comes a moment where you have to choose, do I believe or not believe? You know, I mean, you, we can try to figure it all out, but it's, do I believe? Uh, we were so blessed to be able to uh, be in um, Europe and to be with Marilla and Willem in, uh, in the Netherlands and to uh, worship with them and to minister. I think I sent a video, if you were here last week, of the church there in the Netherlands, um, whose pastor is Pastor Bruce and his wife, uh, Angelique. And they are actually watching us this morning. Um, it's afternoon for them. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> and they are, are on, on screen. They, they've texted me and, and WhatsApp me to let me know that they are watching. And I wanted to dedicate that song to them because we believe that revival is coming to the Netherlands. Is that right? And uh, we are coming, we've come into agreement with what God is doing there to support the work of God. And, I, and we're going to continue to pray. Our intercessors are, will be praying. We're believing God for a, a major breakthrough and move there because the ground is ripe. The field is white. It is a, a great opportunity. And so we uh, here at Epic in Lakeland, Florida, send our greetings to you, uh, Pastor Bruce, and to the whole church there. There in the Netherlands, and just want you to know: be brave, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Now, this morning as well, um, uh, before the word, I would love to be able to share with you guys. Uh, is uh, Pastor Latricia here? Is she in? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just share a little bit about uh, the VBS was this weekend. How many of you know VBS was this weekend? And I, I know there were like forty. 44 kids or something here on Friday night and oh, well over 30 kids here on uh, Saturday morning uh, and all day. And they had all kinds of activities. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I came up yesterday. I saw all of the people 
who were here working. The team was strong. Uh, it was great to see all of you taking this seriously and, uh, and, and being a part of ministry to these kids. And, um, and we are uh, very grateful for that. Uh, pastor Latricia, who is our children's pastor, is uh, coming to the platform right now. I just wanted her to greet you guys and, and just give, give us an update. And I wanted us to thank God for a visionary leader uh, like Pastor Latricia. Yes. Well, first, I'd like to, I really honor you, um, <laughs> Apostle you. and Pastor Steve. Thank y'all so much for the vision of God in your life. Like, it's incredible. It's amazing. And, and just to see it blossomed while you all were on the mission field was God. Like, y'all are so blessed. So yes, I have to say are. that. We are. Um, we BBS are. BBS 2015, is, it was wonderful. God used these kids to learn ministry. So they were learning dramas. They were learning dances and choir songs. And it wasn't like a normal VBS where you would have a breakout session for a craft or a game. They had all those fun things, but they were disciples of Jesus Christ and learning at his feet and his presence was so abundant and Hallelujah. rich. We got a chance to go take these kids to first Florida Presbyterian Homes. And it was a, a retirement center where these residents, they just needed some life. And I was concerned about going and I'm like, Lord, we need to be ministering to kids. And he says, from from the youngest to the oldest. Okay, Everyone amen. needs to know about my love. And there was a woman there who had been uh, suffering from dementia for many years now. She hasn't shown kind of any kind of emotion. And the nurse came to one of our leaders and said, hey, listen, while those kids were ministering, she smiled and she's still <laughs> smiling. I love and that it. hasn't Isn't happened awesome? in years. So be encouraged, y'all. Like, as parents, to continue to water the seeds of your children, I don't care how young or old they are, invest into the kingdom of God Amen. for them Amen. and for your legacy. Yes, Because it's worth it. It is. Amen. Thank it's you. Thank Amen. You. We are blessed. Yeah, we, we do, do not take for granted. Thank you, Brother Larry. Uh, we do not take for granted that uh, the Lord has favored us and blessed us with tremendous uh, folks and, and teams. And uh, while we greatly, here you go, Brother Larry, if you'll take that back for me. While we um, greatly um, missed being with you, and it's always bittersweet because it's, it's like when you go somewhere and you think, oh, I wish so-and-so could see that. Well, we always feel that way. We, we wish you could be a part of that. But, but we left knowing that we are in a season and a time when God is, uh, is completing and fulfilling his word to us, perfecting his work in us. And I do not take for granted that you remained uh, at your post, that you continue to serve the Lord with your faithfulness and your giving and your attendance uh, and that uh, God uh, put Pastor Michael and Pastor Mel in a place of, of helping us steward this thing and he's done an awesome job because yes, amen. Because I did, I did watch. So I, I did, I did uh, take role. No, I didn't, but <laughs> sometimes I wish I could, but uh, no, I am grateful. You were, you were very, uh, very faithful, and you know, this is the fulfillment. This is the way it's supposed to work, and uh, as we continue to grow in the grace of God, it is good uh, to see you and to be here with you. Uh, Psalm 37 I'm going to read a scripture to you out of that. While we were gone, uh, God really began to speak to me and download lots of things to me that I'm very thankful um, that I, I'm going to be sharing with you over the next while uh, as we uh, gather together. Forgive me. I also want to today welcome um, it's Catherine Gonzalez. His sister is here. I'm sorry. I don't know your first. Huh? Carol, Carol is here, and we're and your husband. We're so glad that you're here, and I know that you're happy to have them here from Texas, right? We we Texans we like to stick together, so we're glad that you're here. You know, great great elders in this body. Um, uh, Bill and Catherine Gonzalez have served us now for these many years, and so we're so thankful to have you in, in the house. 
while we were in, in Europe, um, one of the things we found out when, whenever we transitioned into uh, the Netherlands, it became very clear uh, that uh, the culture there, while everywhere it was different, there they have a very specific uh, kind of thing that is very cultural to the Netherlands, and that's bicycles. Everybody rides bicycles. They ride bicycles instead of owning cars. It's easier to get around for them. And especially because 90% of the time, they're the ones who get the right of way. So if you're driving a car, you have to stop and let them pass. And, and, and believe me, they don't care. You know, if you're, if, if you're in the bike lane and they're driving, I mean, they're on that bike and you're on the sidewalk, uh, you better get out of the way because you may get hit. They're, they're don't, they don't stop to see if you're going to part the way or not. And so um, it was really interesting. Now, as a little girl, I, I rode bicycles. I love to ride bicycles. I'm a good bicycle rider. See, you just didn't know that about me, but it's true. Now, I, I've always wanted to ride bicycles again. It just seems like in Florida, it's so hot. And so I, we haven't done much bicycle riding in many years, not since I was really a young girl. And so when we got to the Netherlands and everybody was riding bicycles and the weather was cool and it was beautiful and there were so many forests and trails and oh, I was so excited. I, I had I, I envisioned and, and, and imagined and fantasized over uh, being on that bicycle and making my way through the forests of the Netherlands. Only one slight problem is that I had to first find a bike I could ride, and so you know Brother Willem. Now, Brother Willem, he will find a way and make a way where there seems to be no way, and so they had many bicycles, so he started bringing the bicycles out. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Willem and... and um, uh, Marilla, were, uh, were with us for many years, and um, he, he's a, a producer and makes films and all of that, and, and, she, and uh, Marilla was over our uh, intercessory team. So they left four years ago and went back to the, uh, to the Netherlands. So we went there because God sent me there and sent us there, and so we, we got there. So I asked uh, Will, and we were staying in their home, so I want to ride bicycles. He was so excited, so he went and got the bicycles. Now, in, this may surprise you, but you know how tall Marilla is, those of you who know her? The, uh, the Dutch people are kind of tall, long legs, and uh, their bicycles are tall. <laughs> and, um, but, but, you know, I know how to ride a bicycle. You understand that. I know how. And so uh, Pastor Loretta got on the bicycle. She rode it, no problem. She could put her foot down and stop, you know. When it's time to stop, Pastor Steve rode the bicycle. No problem, could stop it. No problem. So it was my turn. I got on the bicycle. We were determining it was the best bicycle for me. And I got on the bicycle, and Willem was standing there, and he was talking to me, and he was telling me, he was talking to me about how you do it. Well, I already knew how to do it. And so as he's talking, I take off downhill. And it's got handbrakes. Yeah, hand well, I know how to do that too. I know how to do hand. And listen, in, in Europe, I was driving a standard. I can do these things. I know how to do them. So we're traveling down. I, I hear behind me as Willem, <laughs> Willem was talking when I took off, and then all of a sudden I can hear feet running. <laughs> Willem is running it full out to catch up with me. And uh, I'm thinking, I know what I'm doing. And when we got down to the bottom of the hill, I, didn't, I knew I had to stop. I had no problem starting. But stopping was a problem. Because you have to be able to get your feet onto the ground. And these are high. And when I stopped, I was suspended in midair. And my feet would not touch the ground. So I fell pretty bad. But Willem was there, and he caught it, or at least I fell on him. <laughs> he broke my fall. 
But I decided, you know me, I'm not going to stop after one try. Absolutely not. So here we go. We're going to do it a second time. So we, we decide how it's going to be. Uh, and, and, and here's the problem. I have to figure it out because my feet don't touch the ground with these bicycles. And so when you stop, you got to, any, anybody in here ever rode a bicycle? You know what I'm talking about? Your feet have to be able to touch the ground. And so we decided if I just leaned it over a little bit, just leaned over it when it's time to stop, that this foot would, well. Okay, so I took off Willem running beside me. And it's got time to stop. I stopped, I leaned it over and just kept falling <laughs> on top of Willem. So that wasn't going to stop me. So we get another bicycle. So now I'm practicing. The only way I can stop this bicycle is if I jump off of the seat. I have to jump on the seat, and then I got to jump off the seat when it's time, when you stop. So you got to stop, and I have to jump off the seat to get my feet down on the ground. So we go again. Willem running beside me. So I think I've got it all figured out. I jump off. Still didn't hit it. Boom. On Willem. Because Willem had determined he wasn't going to let me hit that ground by myself. I decided after the third time that, <laughs> that Willem probably needed a break. <laughs> also, maybe it wasn't so good for me to do it. Because, you see, every time I fell, the first time I fell, it wasn't so hard. By the third time I fell, I was more injured. And I was less willing to get back on the bicycle. I thought about the way it is in our walk with God and, and it, it, with all of this and realized that it's very much this way how God works with us, you know, that he, he tells us, you can do it. And Willem was over there saying, now, now Pastor Steve was saying, don't, you shouldn't do this again. Willem was saying, you can do it. And I thought, well, he's the one who's got the most price to pay for it if he thinks I can do it. Yes, you can do it. So I get back on the bicycle because he's telling me I can do it. And here's the deal. Even though I was going to fall and even though I did fall, he was there to help me back up. And I realized that's the way it is in this walk of faith is that God's telling us you can do it. You can do it. Now, you may not have it all figured out. You may not have it done. You know, you might not be in the best place yet, but you can do it. And here's the deal. I'm going to make a deal with you that even if you fall, even if you stumble, I'm going to pick you up. It's all right. Just keep going, you know, just keep trying but unfortunately, disappointment sets in when we find ourselves after falling enough times when we don't want to get back up, get on the bicycle, get on the horse or whatever you want to use, uh, what, what, whatever analogy you want to use. The point is it doesn't hurt so much the first time, but by the third time, we get a little weary of it all and we'd make a decision at that point. I'm not going to get back on there. I'm not going to put myself through that again. I'm just not going to try. But here's the deal, guys. You can't not try and and live for God. If you're going to live for God, walk in faith, you have to get back on with all of the bruises, which if you could see them right now all over my body, you would understand what I'm saying. I am reminded every day that I fell because of the bruises. And if you're not careful, you will give in to the bruises of life instead of getting back on and trying again. Which, by the way, I'm going to get a bicycle and ride it. Yeah, it, it will happen. Psalm 37. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I love this scripture. The steps of a good man or a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. The word ordered there is a really important word. It means this, to set up. To appoint, establish, fix, prepare, make sure, make prosperous, confirm, direct, fix, ordain, and perfect. So let's say it this way. The steps of a good man are set up. They're appointed. They are established. They are fixed in a secure place. They are prepared. They make it sure. They make your way prosperous. The steps of a good man are made prosperous. They are confirmed. They are directed, fixed, ordained, and perfected by the Lord. 
I love this scripture. I've always loved it. I, I've only in recent days begun to understand in a greater dimension what he's saying. He says, and God delights in his way, in the, in our way, in the way we walk. So for the rest of your life, you've got to get ready for this, you know, from now until eternity. The truth is you're on a journey. You're walking. You're on a path. And he says the, that the Lord will order, fix it, uh, uh, appoint it, ordain it. In other words, God says, I've got it all under control. I know where you're going and where I want you to go. So the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. When I understand that, it means that I will find delight in the journey itself, even if these aren't the steps I thought I would be taking. Even if I find myself in a foreign land that I don't understand. Even if I am, I, I, maybe, maybe I'm the only one, but I, I don't think so. Uh, I've had to look at my life over the last year or so and really think about, I'm not exactly where I thought I would be 10 years ago. How about you? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I, I, I have dreams, I have vision, and I've got God has spoken words to me, and I, I, I think that that's what, what's going to happen. But the truth is, if God is ordering my steps, then my, it's not, uh, the destination will never be achieved because in God, it's going from glory to glory, from greater to greater. And if I find or fix myself on a goal, uh, I can get lost in the journey because I'm thinking if I don't get to that goal, somehow I've messed up. But the Lord orders the steps of the righteous. If that's true, if I believe it, if I really, really believe that, then I find my joy in the journey of where I am and begin to acknowledge the Lord in all my ways. Now, don't get mad at me this morning because some of you have been trying so hard to get out of where you are, but I'm telling you right now, God has a way of taking us through some very difficult difficult places in order to do what he wants to do in our lives. The process is still the process. But wait a minute. It couldn't be God who has me in the midst of this. The Lord orders the steps no matter what happens around us. You see, this is the way it is. He really is GPS. We, we were driving around, you know, in Europe, and we, didn't, we couldn't read. We couldn't pronounce the names, we, but we had GPS in the car. So we're driving around. It's telling us to go to a street that's 40 words long. <laughs> Very difficult. And, and so all we can do is trust that, it, it, that on that GPS it says that. But, you know, there were times when we made a wrong turn. And, you know, the GPS would readjust to get us back to where we were supposed to be. Right. You hear me? Yeah. You hear it this morning? See, God orders our steps. He'll readjust. <laughs> he, he's the GPS of our lives. As we find ourselves in places when we think we're on a straight journey, sometimes we, we turn left or we turn right thinking that that's what the map said. But we were wrong because we couldn't read that map because it was still foreign to us. We aren't the ones who created that map. We don't speak that language. But you see, those who speak that language and who understand, they know what it means. So they know how to redirect us and maybe take us a long ways around sometimes because sometimes that turn took us a long ways to get back on track. But we were still following the steps of the GPS in order to get back on the journey that God or that we had determined we were going to go on here are you, is it making sense so sometimes the, the the turn might be just quick just turn and all we had to do was make a u-turn go back and we were fine see that's the way it is in our walk in God there are some things sometimes where we find ourselves where uh you know we're making our steps and 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 God is ordering us steps, and we find ourselves we might turn a little too early or we might miss the turn now, in, in our thinking, that means we have messed up, we have missed, it's all over, but not in God's thinking, because God says, no, I know how to redirect, yeah. I know how to readjust, <laughs> I know how to order your steps. So that means this, the, uh, uh, the good step the, the, of a good man, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. That means even if this good man takes a turn too early, uh, that doesn't bother God. God says, no, no, here, just keep walking. I'm going to bring your steps on back around. He's still, even in my missed turn, he is still ordering my steps to get me back on track with his word. 
Amen? Amen. The next part of this verse in Psalm 37, the next, the next verse is, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. The word uphold there means to prop up, to support, to sustain, refresh, and revive. <laughs> He says, okay, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord and in when you fall. Because even though I knew how to ride that bicycle, I still fell. He says, even when you fall, the Lord will prop you back up. He'll prop you up. He, he, he'll, he'll support you. He will even revive you in the midst of your fall. He'll revive you. He will give you fresh energy. He will breathe on your life like never before, even in the moment. So though you fall or though you stumble or though you find yourself on the wrong path, don't worry because God will lift you up. He'll prop you up in the midst of it and then he'll breathe a breath of fresh life on you and you will find yourself revived in the midst of the worst moment in a moment when you don't understand you can't figure it out you don't have the answers but that's what God promises us and if we believe that the word of God is true then it changes how we live how we think the truth is What he's telling us is, I am in control. Hmm. We got a problem with that, most of us. We we cast off restraint because we don't like to be restrained. Anybody here like to be restrained? Mm -mm. We don't like those words like control and restraint and all that because, after all, we want to make our own decisions. I mean, we're good Americans. We get to make our own choices, and we vote, and we we live in a democratic society where we get to choose, and, and we don't like it when we are ever restrained on it. In fact, the... We want to avoid control at all costs. And right now, if I'm using those words and it's kind of stirring you up on the inside, you can, you can be pretty much aware that nobody likes control. And honestly, I don't like to be controlled by anybody else, but the truth is God is in control. He's not suggesting. God's not just uh, wanting to have a discussion about whether it's a good idea or not. Now, now hear my heart in all of this. I was talking to a man this week uh, about children and raising children in this day and age and what we deal with. And I said to him that what's interesting to me, and this is what I observe, is that we as families have lost the ability to establish culture in our families. Our kids don't know. They don't know what's expected, and, and, and we're, we're no longer, we're not st- uh, setting the culture. We expect the school to do it. We expect the church to do it, and the reality is that neither one are going to really set the culture for our children, and we have a responsibility to show them what restraint means. Amen. Yeah? <laughs> you know, if, you're, if, you're, if your kid, uh, we, we teach all our kids this, you know, don't stick your hand in the fire because it burns right and so we uh, we teach them that don't put your hand in the fire we don't tell them go put your hand in the fire let it burn you so you will not do that again why is it that we want to teach them other principles by saying we're going to let them make their own choice let them choose how they no they are eventually going to choose they are. That, that's going to happen. But we teach them restraint. We teach them how to live, what they're supposed to do, and we teach that by the Word of God. And if we have a problem with what I'm just saying to you right now, then you, you now don't understand what's wrong with your kids. Yeah. Oh, I'm there, uh, yeah. Y'all wanted me to come home and just prophesy, didn't you? <laughs> I'm serious about the generations that are coming up. God called us. We are a transgenerational people. (laughs) Now that's, I I might have to change the word because people get confused with all that's going on in the. (laughs) Transgenerational 
means that we believe that God is at work in the smallest and the youngest to the oldest. That this is God, and that God means the generations to work together. This isn't supposed to be just a youth church or an elderly church or a black church or a white church or a female church. Or it's, it's transgenerate, crosses all of the barriers, and, and we work together as one. That's what pleases God. But here's the deal. I'm serious about this. We've got to save. We've got to save a generation. And, and we're going to have to. Uh, listen, parents, you're going to have to make a decision on if you will let God restrain you and you will obey God. Therefore, restrain your children. Teach them. Train them. Restraint is about training. Yeah. Like putting their hand. You restrain them from putting their hand in fire, don't you? Right. We can't be afraid to discipline, to bring. If we don't learn discipline, then, then we will not be able to follow God and live for God and establish his kingdom. It is necessary as families. And I know we're coming up on Father's Day. And I understand our families are not some, you know, beautiful little storybook that, you know, where everything works perfectly and everybody's in place. All the kids say, yes, ma'am. And you know, no ma'am, and, and uh, there's plenty of money, and there's, everybody's doing great. I, I understand. We're dealing with issues in our lives, but we have to teach the principles and live the principles that the Lord orders our steps. And let me tell you, let me tell you what Peter said about that. First Peter chapter 2, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the Scripture. And so he's starting to talk about Jesus as being a living stone. He's not some dead idol somewhere. He's a living stone, and we come to him as living stones. He says, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame therefore to you who believe he is precious but to those who are disobedient are you listening to those who are disobedient the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense now listen they stumble being disobedient to the word this is the most important part to which they also were appointed. Do you understand? You are appointed to the word. So yes, God orders our steps, but there are times when stumbling will come. He says, if you disobey the word, you will stumble. There's a stumbling that will happen as a result of not obeying the word. So don't be disobedient to the word. Find out the word of God. Live by the word of God. Give by the word of God. Serve by the word of God. Stay married by the word of God. Parent by the word of God. Get healed by the word of God. Let the word of God stand preeminent in your life. Don't disobey the instructions of the Lord. Don't run rampant and be unrestrained. Let the restraint strength of God come into your life. Some of us need to rise up again. We have been overwhelmed. We've been overcome. Our borders and our boundaries are down and we find ourselves with no hedges. Bring the hedges back up for protection. You do that by the word of God. You do that by declaring God's word. You do that by reading God's word, living God's word, praising God. Because no matter what happens, the word of God will never fail. Amen. Amen. But even when we know that and we find ourselves knowing that, when we get disappointed because the way we thought things would happen, see, we, we, we can agree that God orders our steps. But when things get out of whack, it doesn't make sense, then we don't. We don't know. We don't understand. We get disappointed. We're not, we're not where we thought we would be. Things happen we didn't expect to happen. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves beginning to pull back and stop believing. We're fearless in 15. That means we've got to fearlessly believe. we got to stand up in, in the face of whatever it is. How is God going to get me through this? I don't know, but I'm not going to stumble. 
see. I, I, I don't know. Right now I might be, I, I might find myself not understanding and I don't have answers and it doesn't make sense. And I look at my life and I look at the last 10 years or I look at the last five years or I, I look at the last six months. Things don't make sense. This is not where I thought I would be. My little storybook, my little fantasy of life has been, is, is absolutely exploded in front of me. I don't know what to do except here's the deal. I'm not going to stumble by disobeying his word even when I don't understand. Because by obeying in the midst of this moment, God is going to take me through. He might have to prop me up, and I'm talking prop me up to get me through it. But he will uphold me with his right hand. He's not going to let me be destroyed. He's not, uh, he's not going to let me stay down there. I might fall, but he's going to cushion it, and he's going to pick me back up. And he's going to say, you can do this. He says, he says you can do it. But, I, but I've failed. I've messed up. I've, don't you understand? I, and, and not only that, I've done that more than once. God says, come on, you can do this. You can keep doing this. Come on, get up. Believe the word of God. Just believe what God says. And that's where I find myself. Now, here's what he says. You stumble when you disobey. But then he goes on to say this about us. We are appointed to that word. You have been appointed. Look at your neighbor and say, you are appointed to this. That means God put a stamp on you and a seal on you and said, you are appointed to the word. Wow. And this he goes on to say, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Are you seeing who you are? You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. Uh, even if you find yourself on a path you don't understand, it doesn't change who you are and it doesn't change who he is. And he goes on to say, Beloved, I beg you, I'm begging you, and this is it, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. He's saying to him, you've got to understand you are a stranger. You are a pilgrim in this land. Your, your citizenship is in heaven. It is not in America. It's not in the Netherlands. It is in heaven. And you have to walk as a journey, one who is journeying through this place. Yes, this may be where we are for the moment, but we have to walk as those who have citizenship in the kingdom of God. And when we walk like that, we will not, we will abstain from the lustly, the, the lust of the flesh that war against our soul so we're not warring all the time on the inside with fear and with doubt and with shame and all of that stuff. We walk as those who have another citizenship, those who live. See, I might walk on this earth, but God is ordering my steps. He will order my steps through eternity. He has begun and he's not going to stop. And where I am right now is in his hands. He is in control. He is in control. He is in control and I give up. 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 I can't build this church. I can't save my family. I can't heal my body. I can't do any of those things. I can't do them. I give up. Well, honey, <laughs> did God have anything to say? <laughs> he said good preaching. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I think about and and. I know this is difficult. There have been several of us in this congregation who have lost family members over the last year. You know, we couldn't, we couldn't save it. You couldn't do it. We, we look at our lives, we look at each other, we think, oh, if Pastor were here, she could stop this or save it. Or if, if you know, we always think that we can save it, but here's the truth He orders our steps. He's in control, and I have to trust when I do not understand that my God is still in control. 
I remember the first time I met Pastor Stanley, and I was at a church in New York, and I was preaching there. It was nearly 30 years ago, and first time I ever saw him, this, this church, Mount Zion, name of this church, and they were meeting at the YMCA. And um, so they were all down there, and they were just singing, and they were singing this old song, and it's uh, on this, based on this scripture. And when I saw Pastor Stanley the very first time, I saw him. He was dancing and twirling around and singing this song, and they kind of reminded me in the first service, so y'all might have to help me again, but it's, uh, Rejoice for the steps of righteous man. They are ordered of God. They are ordered of God. Y'all ever heard that? Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. In the time of trouble, God will uphold you. God will preserve you. And God will sustain you in the time of trouble. God will lift you up. So rejoice for your steps are ordered of God. Y'all ever heard that? So I remember he was dancing and I, and I heard I, 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 as they were singing that song and I was watching him and I thought, you know, that man knows that his steps are ordered of the Lord. And it wasn't but a few more minutes that he actually got up on the, uh, on the microphone and uh, he gave a testimony about the fact he worked for UPS. And uh, he, so the song is, uh, he will uphold you, preserve you, and sustain you. And so he worked for UPS, but he, he believed that that's what God would do for him. I remember that 30 years ago. And you know, the man still walks believing that his steps are ordered by the Lord. But my, my point of it is this, that, that we have to, it changes the way we live, the way we think, and the way we act if we understand and believe that our steps are ordered by the Lord. Um, it, when, when we were when we were traveling, you know, we, the first thing we did uh, for our 45th wedding anniversary before we went, for, went and ministered is that we were on a two-week cruise that went across the Atlantic. And so we went from Tampa to Europe. We got off in Belgium. And, and so you're like seven or eight days out on the Atlantic Ocean without stopping. And Lord knows I did not want to do that. Uh, Pastor Steve loves it. And I did it because I knew he would love it and make him happy. I was really regretting that I cared <laughs> what made him happy. <laughs> after, after it was all said and done and we were on our way, I was thinking, what have I done? And, of course, we leave, and, and the, the earliest named storm in the history of the world <laughs> happened, you know, when we left. Did you know that? Right out there in the ocean, yeah. And so that was when we left. So as we're going, you know, this storm is going on. And then really for most of the days we're out on the Atlantic, there's a big storm. We're in the middle of it. 60 mile an hour winds, 50 degrees, it, and waves of 25 feet and bigger that swelled. And I don't know if you can think about 25 feet, a wave being 25 feet tall. And so my worst fears had, had been realized. <laughs> and, now, and now I was really mad at him. No. <laughs> I thought, you know, you look what you got me into. I didn't want to be here. <laughs> but the most amazing thing happened. Those ships are equipped with these stabilizers on either side. And in the midst of that storm, it did not really interrupt anything because the stabilizers kept us stable in the midst of those high seas, high winds, temperatures, and all of that. And it didn't stop us one bit, Brother Larry. I don't know that there's a single buffet that Pastor Steve missed. Oh. <laughs> That's the way it is with God. <laughs> You can be in the biggest storms. You can be in the place where you just say, well, how did I get myself in the midst of all of this? And the stabilizers just come out. And they keep us stable while God orders our steps. Stand to your feet this morning. 
Hallelujah. I am a blessed woman this morning. And we are a blessed people. We are blessed because our God knows us by name. We are blessed because the word of God is true. We are blessed because we believe this morning that the word of God is what, what it says and that he is who he says he is. This morning I can stand here and declare before you that even in the midst of fear or failure or any of those other issues, I know in whom I have believed. I know that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him. I know that this morning. Do I always live it like that? No. Sometimes I have a doubt. Sometimes I get afraid. But here's the thing. Even in my fear or even in my doubt, whatever it is, I be believe, Lord, that you are who you say you are. And so I declare over my life according to your word, not according to the circumstances or my disappointments or what did not happen, because I have enough to live in in what God says. And it doesn't matter what else didn't happen. I believe that he's the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. I believe that this morning. I believe that he is not mocked, that whatsoever men soweth, that shall he also reap. I believe that. And so I keep sowing even when I don't see it because that's not the point. The point is that I believe. You understand that this morning? To, to get my eyes on him and, and, and what happens in the midst of our praise is that we transcend the moments that are difficult. We're able to glide through those times that don't make sense when other people are saying, I quit. Because sometimes when you've fallen three times, you just quit. Don't quit. You don't give up. Because the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. You can't give up. You've got to keep walking. It's not our destiny. We've been appointed to the word of God. It is not, it's not our purpose. It's not who we are. We've got to be who we are no matter where we are. And no matter who we're with, we still got to be us. And this is who I am. I'm a believer and this is what I do. I believe. I believe God. I believe God when it doesn't look good. I believe God when it looks great. I believe God when I don't understand. I believe God when I think I know everything. I still believe God because I give up. But God is in control. He's in control of my life. He's in control of your life. Give up to God and let him be in control this morning. Father, we stand before you. We are people (laughs) who love you, love you, love you, love you. But Lord, sometimes we don't understand and sometimes we even get a little mad at you because it doesn't make sense some of the things we go through. There are things that don't sound like what you promised. But Lord, we hold on. We hold on to your purpose and your time. And and we trust. And so go ahead and restrain us when you need to. Lord, keep us in a narrow place in the days when that must be. Lord, do do what must be done in our lives. And, And thank you for upholding us with your right hand. Hallelujah. pray in Jesus name everyone who agreed said I heard that Jeremy's in Israel is that right where are you come here come here I don't know how it happened or what happened or I don't know come come on up here but uh, he was scheduled to go to Israel last year wasn't it yeah I'm gonna need a microphone if y'all can help me here I just remember that um, we were all excited about it. I mean, up to the day he was going to Israel, and then they canceled the trip because of what was going on over there. But but he's in Israel today. He is, and I was bitterly disappointed. He had worked five years last year to to um, get to Israel with Civil Air Patrol, and just could not understand why you know God would let this happen. Jeremy handled it much better than I did. Of course, we came to pastor, and she just kept saying, trust God, trust God. And it took me a long time before I could say, okay, God, I give up. You know, and I trust you that there was a reason. I don't see it. I don't understand it. But you have your reasons. And so some other things happened that were were sort of good, or good, actually. Um, I just didn't want to see it at the time uh, uh, that summer uh, for him. Um, and he... Uh, was able to make some contact and we, we hosted cadets in our home um, 
who came here from other countries and he's going there this summer but just suddenly about six weeks ago a trip to Israel through Liberty Council came up it only cost $500 it's for college students plus they pay their ticket uh, you had to buy your ticket to New York but they're there for 11 days doing it's an over $4,000 trip everything is covered for him they are just doing just remarkable things not only are they they going to all the the sites that you know we we love as Christians and and but they're doing you know above and beyond that and um, they're meeting with the Knesset tomorrow. They are. Um, they went to the Golan border with an Israeli colonel that meet with the IDF. They're, you know, they're, right, you know, he was swimming in the Dead Sea today. Those of you who've been to Israel know they've they've gone. Um, they were in Upper Galilee and and just just doing you know everything. This is so much even better than what last year would have been. And I am humbled by how good God is, you know, even, even, you know, I mean, he can take us being mad at him, you know, and, and, but we have to get to that point and say, okay, God, no matter what, you are God, you are in control and you know, even if I don't see it, you know, Amen. so we're just praising God for what he's done. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? Isn't that a good, good report? So, so my point really is just this. There, everybody in this room has something, or those watching us by the internet. There's something that doesn't make sense to you right now. There's some fulfillment that hasn't happened yet. There's even a loss, perhaps, that you can't... I don't know. Somehow you just can't make the excuses or find the reasons for it that don't make sense. But whatever it is, we have to believe that the Lord orders our steps and believe that we are not just temporal beings. We are eternal beings. And our God, who is eternally good, he, he's not worried about our few years here on earth. He knows what your end and my end is. He knows that. And so in that process, he's much more thinking of eternal kinds of ways than we are. So I don't know. I don't know how to, to make it right. I mean, honestly, so, some things you just can't make right. Some things you just have to accept. And I'm sorry. I wish I could. I wish I could find an answer to everything for you. But I can't. I can't find an answer to everything for me. But I know one thing. My God is good. He is good. And he's good all the time. And he has my best interest in mind. And he's got yours. We walk from this place, let's walk with the same kind of assurance and just what the Word says to us, how He orders our steps with confidence to perfect and to prepare and to, and to cause us to stand upright. And, and He's setting us up. That's what it means to be ordered is a setup. God's setting us up in every way for His purpose, His will. Can we agree to that? Amen. Amen. If you agree, I want you to just raise one, at least one hand up and say, Lord, I agree. I come into agreement with your word. I release everything else. Every place I disagree. Every place I misunderstand. I release it. And I come into agreement with you. And I line myself up with the will of God. And I ask you, Lord, to help me to not stumble, but to walk in, a, in confidence that the Lord has ordered my steps. Yes, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. We have pastors who are here. We'd love to pray with you. Healing in your body. If you need healing today, we believe that by his stripes we were already healed. And we believe that a miracle is in the house for you. Let us, we want to pray with you. If you need prayer in any way, whatever it may be, the prayer of agreement, financially, your home, whatever it is, we are here to believe God. Because we believe that when we pray and agree according to the word of God, that he hears us and he answers. And we believe that that your answer and your miracle is on the way. Amen. So God bless you as we dismiss you this morning in the presence of the Lord. As you, as you go, remember this. The same God who changes you and is in you and changing your life gives you the power to speak into others' lives. So go out and change somebody's life this week. God bless you as you go.